All right, we're off to a good start here, don't you think? <laughs> Listen, uh, people that have watched my videos before understand what I'm about to say. People that are new because they're here for the K-Bike, you should know that um, my basement isn't heated and it is five, like four or five degrees below zero outside Fahrenheit. Uh, so I wear this while well, I, I have a plethora of onesies that I wear to stay warm when I'm working on bikes in the winter time. So I certainly can't ride, and I can't go for a run, and what else am I gonna do but bundle up and work on bikes? Okay, now that's out of the way. Let me get out of the way for this thing here. Well, I'll try to in this uh, suit. There we go. No, no, we're out of the way. Okay, so um, this is a 1995 K75 RT, blue metallic. It's a BMW, of course, and right there, see that? BMW. Um, well, before we begin, if you look over here, there's a GS over here, but that GS is old news, because this thing is replacing it, well, at least for the next few weeks. Um, what do I say? I mean, what, what is there to talk about? Uh, it has 38,000 miles on it. Wait, no, sorry, hold on. 38,509, so I did ride it uh, a long way home. Um, I got it for a steal. Uh, I spent $1,500 for this bike, which just seems outrageous, right? <laughs> um, and here's the thing about buying bikes sight unseen, aka flying rides. Uh, the guy that posted this, he buys and sells a few bikes. If he sees a good deal, he'll buy it, he'll ride it for a bit and sell it. Uh, I'm kind of getting into that same mode myself. And uh, he bought this bike for probably around that, maybe a little less, uh, and then sold it to me. Now, he posted this at a pretty good price with the reasoning that it's winter time. I gotta get rid of this thing. So um, I looked at the weather and said, wow, it's gonna be like 70 degrees in Richmond, Virginia. It's gonna be like 35 degrees in New Hampshire on December 21st. So I flew down and I rode this thing home. Um, has ABS, which was an option back then. Other than that, it's a fully stock K75 RT. There's a little bit of weirdness though, and I'll go around the bike and show you some weird things as we, as we get into this. But uh, I kinda wanted to explain what we're doing here. Uh, what we're doing here is we're not rebuilding this. We're not chopping it. We're not modifying it. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna get it refreshed. We're gonna get it back roadworthy again. Uh, and that's kind of a, a crazy statement to make because I bought it and we were at 600 miles home. It was fully fine to ride home like this. This was a fantastic bike to get home. I had no problems with it at all. Uh, the only really complaint I had was kind of around the fuel economy, but I don't think, I think that's fine. We were going 80 miles an hour with the windscreen all the way up. And I'm pretty sure that just ate away the fuel economy. So I feel like I was stopping for gas every 150 miles, but that might just be the situation. Um, we'll figure it out once we get those, uh, the valve covers off. And there's any carbon buildup or anything substantial. What we're gonna do is, even though the last two owners uh, claim to have done all the maintenance on it, that's not good enough for me, no offense to those two guys. I spoke to both of them, by the way. Uh, well, I spoke to the guy I bought it from, and I spoke to the guy that sold it to him uh, a few months prior. Um, has the third generation boxes on it. I think the third generation. Um, everything is mechanically sound. I just don't know the history, so let's pan down here. Let's go through what we're gonna do to the bike. Okay, whole bunch of stuff here. Let's, um, let's go through it. And again, sorry about the Chewbacca suit, but it's cold. Give me a break. Uh, like any vintage bike, <laughs> it came with a whole bunch box of stuff. We've got like a new radiator cover, all kinds of bulbs and filters, extra keys, owner's manual. Uh, so this is all stuff that I'm gonna probably use throughout the build if I need it, as needed, that kind of thing. So a box of stuff. Uh, I did notice when I was riding this bike home that the brakes were really squishy. The pads actually don't look that bad but the brakes were super squishy. It could just be really old brake fluid, but they were squishy from like cold. They weren't squishy, you know, maybe they just super old. Uh, so I went ahead and obviously I have brake fluid. Uh, actually, it's not here, it's it's back there in my box. I've got brake fluid, and then I also grabbed the Spiegler um, stainless steel brake lines for front and rear for the K35 RT 91 to 95 with ABS. And these were like 200 bucks, 150 or 200 bucks. Um, it felt like a splurge, but honestly, I remember riding this home thinking, man, this just does not have that bite that I, that I like. And a lot of that's just older bikes. Modern bikes just have a much stronger um, brake technology. So this should do a, this plus a brake flush do a pretty good job. So this plus 
the, uh, where's my brake fluid flush? Oh, yeah, our bleeder, all that gets on the side, and brake fluid is in my uh, uh, toolbox. Uh, obviously, we're gonna be doing a uh, 10W40 uh, oil change, full scent liquid molly with the 75 uh, by 90 uh, gear oil. This is gonna be for the, um, the final drive, I think. Maybe this is final drive. We've got two 75 90s here. One of these is transmission fluid, one of these is gear oil. So we're gonna be doing both of those. Uh, other regular stuff, uh, oil filter, fuel filter. Um, I don't think I need a water pump, but we, we're, gonna, we're gonna order one anyway, so it's gonna do a water pump. Um, three spark plugs, front and rear brakes. These are uh, regular, just standard uh, brake pads, center. I think they're full, full, full brake pads, nothing, nothing unique about them. So I got those in here. We've got uh, ignition coils, three of those of course, there's three cylinders, brand new ignition coils. I don't really have any suspic suspicion of any misfires or issues. This is like more of a 60,000 mile surface, but I grabbed them anyway. Um, we also have here our breather hose, which is uh, really common. Like I think it's every like 12,000 miles you get to replace on this bike. Um, so got a new one of those. We have another, a new valve cover gasket for this bike, uh, as well as a new K75 badge, which I'll show you in a few minutes while I bought that. Somehow I came across two air filters. So an original air filter that's yellowed from being made in the 90s, and then uh, a new uh, air filter. They're, they're the same spec. Uh, splurge items. We have grip puppies. Grip puppies are amazing. I love them. They're on all my bikes. They're great. Um, and we also have here brand new grips, which I'll show why in a second. So we've got left and right grips. And this does have heated grips. This is going to be an exercise for me on um, doing this without breaking the element. I don't know. I might screw it up. If I do screw it up, I'll spend the 300 bucks and get the heated grips. And then finally, we've got brand new pegs just for the uh, driver, not for the passenger. The passenger pegs are almost unused. So there's that. But here's the cool thing. <laughs> this heavy box. Oh, yeah, this thing is heavy. I haven't opened it up yet. Are we in frame? Don't talk. Oh, we're not even in frame. Hopefully that did not get wasted. All right. Now, only 38,000 miles. Just a road bike. It's not going off any wicked jumps. But... We're talking about um, suspension that is 25 years old, 25 years old. And uh, when I was especially riding around uh, New York City, it's very bumpy, right? There's a lot of potholes. Riding through New York City, going to the George Washington Bridge. Um, the bike was not bottoming out. I didn't have anything in these boxes at all, aside from a couple of books. Um, and I had a small dry bag on the back, which was just almost empty because I basically had flown down to Richmond with my full uh, adventure suit and boots and helmet. So basically it was empty. It was just in the, in the clothes that I'd flown down there with and a couple of like my camera and stuff. So, um, so almost nothing but me, basically, the rider. And it didn't feel like I was bottoming out. It just felt like I was riding on like old really rusty like tired leaf springs like just really no bounce back at all so um i purchased um uh, front fork springs which i'm super stoked about i've never done front fork spring changes before on any of my bikes uh, the gs never needs it because it's tail lever on the front uh and my beta i haven't done it on that so front fork springs uh what is the spec on these these are, um, I don't know, 170? Does that mean something? I'll send a bubble link to these at some point. Uh, we also have fork oil, of course. Need to do that. And then we've got this uh, YSS suspension here. There's Wilbur's, there's Olin's, there's uh, YKK, is that one of them? There's um, Tractive, all kinds of suspensions out there. This is actually the cheapest one that Dino Shop sells. And I asked them, like, what am I losing? They said, really, honestly, people love this thing. Uh, if you're not going to tour on the bike with two up, with a ton of luggage, and you're just going to ride it and commute on it and tour on your, by yourself, 
Um, this is a great progressive shock. Most importantly, it's prone to your weight. It's brand new components. It's gonna be a massive difference from OEM, even a new OEM shock. This is an improvement. Um, so I bought it. And you know, this bike is not gonna see 20,000 miles a year like my GS does. So uh, it is sprung from my weight. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Can you guys even see this? Brand new, and it is going to be great on the bike. I actually considered doing a, um, a two spring conversion on this bike uh, where I would you know put a spring on both sides but then I thought actually I'd rather spend the money on um, on just getting um, either do that or get a nicer spring well I didn't either <laughs> so that's the setup so far we got a few more things on order like the battery um, we need to get some parts. I'll show you guys that in a few minutes. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of stuff we're still gonna be doing. Just for now, that's the basics to get us started. And it's occupied the next few weeks, basically, of this stuff. Let's do a walk around. All right, so here's the rear of the bike facing forward to the cockpit. He included this tank bag as well, which is awesome. Thank you, uh, Eddie, for that. Um, I don't know what brand it is, if it's BMW branded or not, but it's a perfect fit, of course. Let's take this off. So I'm grabbing this here. Just clips right in. Yeah, kind of be careful if you don't want to scratch up the tank. So um, primarily when you're looking at the front of the bike here, you've got a little bit of uh, marring right here on the light. Can you even see that? Yeah. Uh, on the light right here. These buttons aren't labeled. They don't work either. They're accessory buttons. Uh, if you look here, these grips, let's zoom in. This is too much. Okay, that's better. So when you look at these grips here, you can see how they're nubs right here. Uh, and they're actually angled back a little bit from years of, of abuse. Um, I don't have any more, but on the ride home, my right hand, which I use your throttle hand, um, was, was really blistered up really bad. And it's not just because I'm a weakling, it's because these things are rock hard. And when you compare them to the new grips, um, these are like holding on to pieces of rock. So uh, yanking these off, hopefully without damaging the heated grips, is going to be a priority. And then covering these with grip puppies, so they, um, they do you know, much better. Uh, it comes with a ram ball mount. Fuel gauge is uh, right here. The all the button, all that thing works. So you turn it on. You got your uh, high beams working. No problem. You got your turn signals. I love the noise. That canceled. And then of course you have your uh, your windscreen up and down. It works. Could be greased a little. A little lithium grease sprayed in there may be helpful, but it works. Um, heated grips right there, and there's no, there's no on off button, or there's no on and off indicator for heated grips, they just run or they don't. And then you've got your ABS and you've got your, your uh, flashers there. Um, choke, start, stop, horn, um, everything you'd expect basically. Now down here is where the problem kind of starts. So this is where, um, these are two speakers. So BMW will sell you a radio to put in here. It's a cassette player. We're not gonna install the radio. Well, if I find one cheap, I'll put it in there. But basically this here doesn't, doesn't close. So this just kind of, this is just loose. Well, it's held in with a, a screw right there. But basically this won't clip down anymore because um, it has some broken, this is fine, but there's broken tabs here. And this basically, aside from these two sort of screws right here, is kind of... So that just broke. This piece just broke completely off. Um, and getting this back in here... Doesn't, it's all broken. There's even broken plastic in here. So, um, on eBay, there's lots of, of this on eBay. Um, you can grab these for about 35 bucks a piece, and then you can grab the uh, radio bit there for 70 bucks. I think I'm going to spend probably 200 to 300 dollars replacing all the black plastic up and around on both sides. Both sides are broken, so um, yeah, that's something that I need to need to replace um, before I can rightfully, you know, ride it around without it all dinged up. I'd like to be able to actually put stuff in here and lock it, as opposed to just be flapping around in the wind. 
Um, so the radio does go in there if you wanted to go in there, but it's not there right now. So that's kind of a problem. You've got some scr scratching on the tank. Um, the roundels are a little faded. So I'd, I'd like to be able to you know buff that a little bit and make it a lot cleaner, but it's really not the end of the world. Yeah, back down to here, you can kind of see these. are supposed to connect. I don't know. I don't know how it's supposed to go in there, but I'm not happy with it. So I'm gonna take these off and I'm gonna replace them basically. Make those new again. Uh, you can also see here some paint chipping. That's my fault. This paint on this thing, was almost mar free when I got it. Uh, my climb pants have this uh, super fabric ceramic on the knees and I'm so tall that I couldn't get my knees in here on the way down. It, I just don't fit this bike uh, without switching to maybe a lower seat. Maybe well, it's a higher seat. Maybe it's a higher seat I need. Anyway, I don't fit the bike right now and I'm gonna make some changes to the seating position to make that work for me. But um, because of that, I had to run 600 miles home with my legs on the outside of both sides of the fairing, which means I've scraped the paint here. So if I can find a metallic blue uh, pen from BMW that works with this. I'll buy that and fix that. All right, let's keep going. Another one, the back of the bike right here. There's no K75 right here in the back, or there should be. Um, I was told it just didn't come with one. I don't know if I believe that or not, but I'm going to be uh, putting that K75 RT sticker on here because it needs it. So it's a little raised thing. You've seen it on all the old bikes. Um, yeah, it's going to be great. I'm also going to be tearing off this red reflective tape that's on the uh, the pannier boxes. It's 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 it does it works. I run reflectors on all my bikes, but this stuff here, if you look over on this side, it's uh it's peeling off basically. So hit that with like a heat gun and just basically pull it right off. It's just going to come right off. Let's do a full walk around without the gimbal. Uh, these stickers are also going to be coming off if I can get them off without doing any damage. So I'll get all this stuff off, make these boxes look clean again. But the uh, round does look nice, don't they? So this is the stuff I was talking about. I mean, it just, it's just coming right off anyway. So hit that with a heat gun and get that off of there. Same thing over there. Add the RT badge right there. Take this sticker off, off right there. Uh, clean this up. This is some leather moisturizer. Got some chipping there as well with that pent. Paint pen can really come in handy. Uh, moisturize the seat, maybe even get it recovered, unless I go just switch it up to basically getting a um, a higher model anyway. So tank is not perfect, but with a good wax, it should uh, look fine from five feet away. It's a 25 year old bike, what do you expect? So here's a close up of those grips. Again, 25 year old grips, no problem. I'm not, I'm not complaining. This right here, this little gringy stuff right there is what we're calling the blisters on my hand. And we've got a little scratchy light, which actually does work, by the way. The light works. <laughs> Your uh, reading light. There's some um, some tape right up here where someone had some stuff stuck before. So I'm going to remove the um, the tack or control whatever you call it. Remove this tape, some Velcro stuff. Uh, the case where this bike was actually dropped, you can see where it was repaired here. Again, from five feet away, you can't tell, but it's there. Clean it up the best I can, basically. So one thing I noticed is the, um, this side crash bar is black, but this side crash bar is silver. So I'm gonna take it to a machine shop, my powder coater. I'm gonna have him um, strip one or both of them and basically make them both chrome. I think it'll look much better like that. Uh, underneath here, there's our rubber brake lines on the left. Radiator cow looks pretty good. It seems to be cleaned up a little bit. Some more touch-up paint right there. Coming around, get on the driver's side where we were. Let's get down lower. I don't, if you have a K75, I don't know what the deal is with this. This doesn't, shouldn't this go in further? Like this is weird to me, right? Shouldn't that go in? I mean, it stays in. But I don't, I don't know. I'll play that more when I get it apart. Um, I'm going to shine up the exhaust a little bit. You can't do a ton. There's some grease back here we can clean up with some S1000. Uh, S1000? S4000? S S something. Anyway. Then we got our fuel rail up top. And then a valve cover here. Let's go underneath the bike. So, nothing crazy under there. 
Just some cleanup there with some uh, mothers. The cool thing about the uh, K75 RT, which I like a lot, is you've got this, uh, obviously these might need to be, these are pretty strong, but the cool thing about the K75 RT is obviously the circuit stand needs some touch up paint right there. Uh, but these springs probably also need to be replaced. They're still strong, but they're rusted out. But the cool thing is on the K75, when you pull the clutch lever, <laughs> that comes up. And this should have like a little, you'd think that would have a little, like a rubber thing on there. Hmm. Also, it's like the, the Germans that put the ABS sticker on there, put it on there like sideways. See that? <laughs> and there's our nice, uh, cool grab handle for uh, moving her around, which is kind of cool to have. All right, other side. Not as much light over here, but we're replacing the brakes, obviously in the lines. Here's that um, that chrome one there. We got a oil left sight level, actually looks pretty good. Doesn't need a new sight level. Here's the uh, other side of the fairing. You can see right here, we've got scratches, basically all the way up with the biggest one being where my knees are right there. Just a shame, really. Um, here's where our, our um, spring is. The OEM spring is still on there. And we've got our, uh, I don't know, is this coolant? Coolant level? I would assume so, it's green. And then these foot pegs. So they're not actually terrible, but they just need, it, it's, it's nice to get them replaced. So I can pull these right off. They just yank right off and put the new ones on there. The passenger pegs are a little more plush, but they're, they're in good shape. Uh, there's our airbox. So basically this whole job kind of requires removing the whole RT fairing. Once the RT fairing is off, it's gonna be just like any other K bike. Uh, and then on this side, we've got some Bondi repair on this luggage box, but way less stickers. So it just looks really good. And then SAE port for a uh, battery tender underneath has the OEM uh, tool. Tools are still underneath the seat, which is pretty cool. Plenty of storage space. A little bit more paint shipping right here. Really just use a nice like paint touch up pen from BMW. Um, and that's it, right? I think that's it. So this whole build hopefully takes me about four weeks. Um, we're about three weeks out from the very start of riding season. I'm talking about like full gear, thermals, snowmobile gloves, all that shit to ride. And then um, I'd say we're about five weeks from riding every single day without any sort of, you know, being overly cold. Should I powder coat these wheels? Should I re-powder coat these wheels? It's about 150 a wheel to re-powder coat them silver. That might look good. Anyway, whole lots of stuff we can do. I can do a lot to extend this build on and on and on forever and ever. But the point is getting her back to her former glory, touching out the paint, waxing it, making that bar silver or chrome, and then uh, making it fit me and then we're road ready. So. That's the K75RT. This is a long video. This is one of those videos where it kind of sets the stage for the whole shebang. And I'm pretty excited about it. So if you have any K75RT or K100 parts, let me know, send me a message and we'll talk about them. Uh, specifically, uh, paint, paint and body work that is this blue metallic. I want to keep the blue metallic. It's so beautiful from five feet away. <laughs> and uh, yeah. That's, that's the story. Okay, guys. Thank you for watching. Rock on. And uh, sorry, Rosie. Your days are numbered.